Horizon Forbidden West is an absolutely amazing game. My comprehensive review will be coming out tomorrow at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time, but in the meantime, there are some settings you're going to want to go through immediately before you even jump into the game to get the best experience. We're talking graphical settings, audio settings, yes, controller settings, and some very unique gameplay, difficulty, and user interface settings as well. Let's go through the settings of Forbidden West head to toe, tip to tits, and optimize this game. Let's get it. So first of all, to get into settings, I know this sounds incredibly rudimentary, but you're going to press the pause button and then go down here to settings. The first tab over here is general. Select your language of choice. English is my native tongue, ladies. Difficulty over here, you have quite a few options, including, I've never seen this before, that actually lets you break out into individual categories, including damage to the main protagonist, enemy health, a mode that drops more loot, and even an automatic heal when you get down to 50% in your health bar. During this initial playthroughs, I'm trying to get my comprehensive review out. I am playing on normal. However, down the road, as I am an esports athlete and sheer gaming specialist, Okay, neither of those. Eventually, I probably will bump this up to hard. Very hard? Yeah, my blood pressure already runs pretty high, so we'll keep it at normal for now. Now, as for quests and waypoint pathfinding, I would recommend leaving this in Explorer. As guided is relatively intrusive, waypoint actually puts kind of a GPS line with neon chevrons on screen that really does take away from some of the immersion and beauty of the game world. However, if you get lost constantly and you don't like to have to press down on the touchpad to pull open your map, then I would recommend turning guided on for waypoint and waypoint only. Quest, you should be able to find everything on on explore just fine. Same thing down here with HUD or heads up display visibility. I would leave it on dynamic. What this is going to do is after a few seconds, it's going to hide or minimize everything on screen except for the bare minimums, the bare essentials, and then just simply swipe up on the touchpad and that will open your full heads up display. This keeps things looking real beautiful on screen, which is especially important if you are a live streamer or YouTuber that's capturing some gameplay for videos. You really don't want your screen cluttered with a HUD. But another cool option, you can come over here to custom and then down here to custom HUD settings and look at all of these options here where you can fully, and I do mean fully, customize the heads-up display, including what information is over enemies' heads, what pops up during combat, what is only there during traversal or exploration. It is incredibly in-depth. I personally don't have the brain cells for it, so I'm going to go ahead and leave it on dynamic, which is the default. Contextual reminders, I'm leaving these on for now. However, after I get about another 10 to 12 hours into the game and I've memorized all of the game's controls like the back of my hand, I'm probably going to turn this off, but what this does is pops a little display reminder telling you, hey, you can vault over this or hey, you can open this door. Hey, you have an ability if you press this key bind. This is during the load screens when it gives you a little tip or trick. You actually have to press the cross button in order to skip past it and start the game. As where if you have it on immediate, as soon as the game loads, which by the way, the SSD or solid state drive on a PlayStation 5 loads this game in mere seconds, like between three to five seconds. I like to leave it on informative just in case I'm in the middle of reading a little article or tip. I can actually press cross to jump into the game. This one is somewhat controversial, but I don't really see why. Weapon wheel slow down. So by default, it's over here at normal. You can turn it off to where whenever you pop open the weapon wheel, it doesn't slow time at all. I have it on slowest. So whenever I press the left bumper, oh, that's Xbox jargon. Whenever you press L1, sorry about that PlayStation guys. Whenever you press L1, it is going to slow time around you, which I find incredibly useful if I get overwhelmed because there's so many enemies on screen or I need to figure out my next play, what enemies in the battlefield are weak to what elements that I might have in my inventory. And I have more time to actually pick and choose what I want to pull out, what weapon I want to grab, and also my next plan of attack. Do I want to do some repositioning and take the verticality of the map? And since this doesn't have an online competitive multiplayer, it's not like you're getting an unfair advantage by turning this on or anything. It's a single player story driven game. So why the hell not, you know? And this doesn't necessarily make the game that much easier, but it is helpful when you are fighting a boss or something. They're about to absolutely mollywop you with a power attack and you can kind of slow down time for a minute and think of what is the best direction to evade this attack. Auto shield wing, I would go ahead and leave this off. What this does is deploys your paraglider or your little laser parachute whenever you jump off of anything that is high enough for Aloy to deploy it. I would leave this off considering there are a lot of times you're in a fight and you're trying to reposition and you don't want your shield wing active. This will activate it if you jump off a damn curb on the sidewalks. I would leave this off so you can manually choose when to deploy it. So the quick time events that pop up, which are called gauntlet runs by default, it's on hold. I would go ahead and switch this to auto. Now mount follows the road. Initially I had this off as I generally hate losing control of my vehicle. Same thing in Final Fantasy 
15 when you're driving the regalia and it just hugs the road on autopilot it kind of drives me crazy however in this game it actually makes sense considering the open world is absolutely massive and there are going to be times you just want to have your mount follow the road so you can do other things you know knocking an arrow in your bow and taking down an enemy so i just leave this on co-pilot i find this completely gimmicky and leave it off it basically allows a second player with a second controller to grab that bad boy and take control for you if i have an epileptic seizure because of the flashing on screen the game stops there i don't need somebody to step in and finish the mission for me this is complete and total personal preference and is only cosmetic but show your headpiece it's just that do you want your helmet or your headdress shown in aloy's outfit i leave it on i think it makes her forehead look good now controls over here you can invert the vertical and horizontal axis what are you some kind of psychopath let's keep it moving movement sensitivity it's just that it's the left analog stick it is the movement of your character i don't really see a need or a want to bump this up however with the right analog stick which is your aiming i do have the horizontal and vertical axis is bumped up two clicks above default now i would like if this had some kind of a percentage or number indicator next to it so i could really dial in and know exactly what my settings are at also i wish they had slightly more adjustment than the 10 clicks of adjustment for example the call of duty franchise has had 20 sensitivity levels since the civil war now over here they do have a dead zone adjustment which is incredibly welcome if you do have a controller that is starting to develop a little bit of stick drift however it is linked between the left and right stick i hope that with a future patch or update this is broken out and separated by thumbstick because generally what happens is you will have stick drift develop on either the left or right stick it is incredibly rare that a controller is just going to develop stick drift on both of the analog sticks at once but it is good they have this option so you don't need to grab another controller out of your collection most people don't have a collection but out of your old happy sock drawer every time you get stick drift now these settings right here are for the haptic feedback and the adaptive triggers which i would leave everything on and maximize considering it is incredibly immersive in this game as it is a first party sony interactive entertainment or sie title it is going to make full use of the dualsense controller to fully accentuate and immerse you into the game and that's exactly what it does here is adds to the immersion for example you get an idea of how much strength aloy is having to use to grapple onto something because you're using strength in your trigger finger and the haptic feedback don't get me started here we don't have time for it but it's insane whether you're crunching on sand or whether you're brushing your shoulders against foliage or whether you're whooshing through the water as you're swimming you're going to feel that relate into your hand now as for aim assist i do have it on default which i think is slightly too intrusive however one click to the left as you see is off i do wish they had off low medium and high but as it is all they have is completely off which playing with a controller with zero aim assist is not only challenging but damn right stupid it's actually incredibly frustrating the whole reason the aim assist exists is to give controller players a chance to be more competitive against keyboard and mouse players and multiplayer games however even in a single player game like this it's going to help you to not get your ass handed to you considering with a controller you have three quarters of an inch of adjustment even if you have a heightened right stick on there in comparison to eight to ten inches of mouse space with a full-size mouse pad just leaving it on default works the best but it is slightly too intrusive and you will find it feather you over targets more than you would like to strong is incredibly aggressive not quite on the level of auto aim where you just press down l2 and it snaps you onto the target but it is very aggressive so since they don't have a low setting i leave it on default motion aiming complete and absolute gimmick i don't know anybody that actually uses this this is when you tilt the controller and it uses that six axis motion sensor to aim uh, no now weapon quick swap is off by default but should absolutely be turned on it allows you to tap l1 and switch to your last equipped weapon and ammo which i don't understand why in god's green earth this is turned off by default because it is incredibly useful not having to pop up your weapon wheel when you know that the weapon you want was the last one you had equipped also you can press square in the weapon wheel to lock or unlock specific weapons that can be used with quick swap so you know exactly what weapons you can quick swap to which is really cool now as for hold and toggle you can set all of these to toggle all to hold however i recommend custom and then i like to have aim on hold and everything else on toggle i'm not going to go through each and every one of these i would recommend that you read the description of each and experiment a little bit but for my needs i've found that this optimizes and smooths out the gameplay to where everything is just that much quicker but one thing that is kind of frustrating is you still have to hold down triangle to actually search enemy bodies or to open doors or to interact with the environment i wish they had a setting for you to be able to just tap instead of hold down for those actions because that would make looting bodies in the battlefield that much quicker if you are some kind of absolute psychopath you can swap the functionality of the left and right stick so if you want to walk with right stick and aim with the left i've never heard of anybody actually wanting to do that but you can do it here same thing if you want to confuse your brain just a little bit more you can make it to where your sticks are inverted only when you're in focus mode i'm sure there's one sociopath out there in his mom's basement right now sweating over a jar of mayonnaise that is like well this is the exact setting for me i've been waiting for this for years
So that's good. Now, dodge in focus mode. At first, I was like, hmm, I want to turn this on. But if you read carefully, it really doesn't matter considering it says this feature is always on when in combat. And when you're not in combat, you don't really want to be dodging all over the place unless you're just doing it for the I'm a streamer factor where you're constantly weapon swapping and sliding and B hopping for, you know, to entertain people. But for the practicality of this game, leaving it off, which is default, makes the most sense. It's always on in combat. And if you press the dodge button, it just closes focus instead of dodging. Now, auto sprint, I have turned on, and this is for a couple of reasons. First of all, every controller, no matter if you get a stock DualSense controller or you get some $300 customer premium controller, they all use the same cheap partsman special Alps thumbstick modules that inevitably get stick drift, whether it happens four months or four years down the road. So by not having to constantly click down on L3, i.e. press down, on the left analog stick. It can prolong stick drift developing on your controller, not to mention, since this is a controller, you're not, you know, using the W sad keys on a keyboard and mouse or whatever. You can control when you activate sprint by how far you push the left analog stick. So if you only push it about 75%, she's basically walking at a normal pace. And then if you press it all the way, she'll engage sprint. But I do not have auto sprint on mount considering you press X to speed up the pace and circle to slow down the pace when on a mount. So I kind of like to fine tune the speed that I'm at. So if I'm looking for an objective or I'm just enjoying the beautiful scenery, I can do that instead of just having him sprint full force. I do have subtitles on. However, in standard, they are really small and non-intrusive, but it is nice if I have the TV volume relatively low before bed, I can still see what's going on. I would leave subtitle background off or else you have these black borders or boxes around it, which I think is very intrusive. Audio mix, default. I would leave all this at default. If you're having a hard time hearing the dialogue or speech, then I would leave speech volume at 100 and knock music and sound effects down to 80. Now, also, if you are a streamer or YouTuber and you're going to be screen recording like I am right now, then what you could do is turn the music all the way down and just have your own music streaming service. Like right now I have on one of my little faders or sliders on my mixer here, my own music playing as opposed to having to listen. Oh, the game is playing its music now. Now I need to turn down my music so we can listen to the game's music. Now, this is an awesome feature. This allows you to reduce or minimize the volume of specific sound effects, such as the sound of machines, the enemies, weapon shooting, or even ambient noise in the environment, such as wind rustling through the trees or cauldron machinery, all the way down to negative 10 decibels. So if there's a specific sound that is just freakishly loud out of your sound bar or headset or surround sound or God forbid internal monitor speakers, then you can change that here, which is awesome. Forcing mono audio would only be useful in one scenario, and that is if you are hard of hearing or completely deaf in one ear. So you have basically a headset or earbud in your one good ear. Forcing mono, you can just put the headset that has all the audio from the 2.1 stereo and put that into your ear and you'll get all the game sound. Now, turning off tinnitus sounds, I don't understand fully what this is. I know what tinnitus is. It's that constant ringing in the ear, which all of you veterans out there should make sure you get logged with the VA to get a little bit of disability. You know what I'm saying? Maybe there's a certain frequency in the game that triggers the ringing, the tinnitus, and you can turn it off, but I didn't notice anything turning it on and off. Now, over here in visual dynamic range, if you do have an HDR monitor or TV, which I do in the front room, so I have been messing around with HDR in the front room where I'm on a 4K TV. However, in the game room, here on a 1440 monitor, this does not support HDR. So I'm not going to have the three options that will pop up, allowing you to adjust high dynamic range contrast. I'm going to go ahead and leave that at default, considering I do have all my color grading and monitor settings done inside the actual monitor itself. Graphics mode, you have two options here. You have favor resolution, which is a 4K 30 mode. 30 frames per second in 2022 is kind of a slap in the tuchus. Granted, the game still looks good in performance mode, which targets 60 frames per second. So I've been leaving it at performance mode. However, for the purpose of my upcoming video review, I have been switching back and forth during certain scenes where there's a lot of beautiful vistas off in the distance and, you know, gorgeous draw distance and just amazing nature and environments. Switching back and forth so I can see if there's really a noticeable difference in things like textures and lighting and reflections, shadows, etc. But about 90% of the time I've been leaving it in performance mode, which is targeting 60 frames per second, not 30, and still looks pretty damn good. Camera positioning by default, it's at left align, so it'll constantly be over Aloy's left shoulder, which can be very, very annoying when you're in a battle and basically you bump up against the tree or something and all you can see is green bushes. You're going to be fighting with the camera quite a bit in this game, unfortunately, common with most third person games that are over the shoulder. But by putting it to dynamic, the game will try and move over her right and left shoulder to give you the best view. And it does a pretty good job. Now, this one is completely personal preference. I guess technically all these settings are. But what this does is gives you those yellow neon cybernetic highlights all over everything that you can climb on. I like to actually click down on the right stick to turn on my focus so I can see what can be climbed on. But if you want it constantly on, you can turn that on as well. Motion blur by default is on. You also have a medium and low.
slow mode, I turn it off completely. I hate motion blur. It taxes your resources of your CPU and GPU or on a console, your APU. Not to mention, I think it just looks bad. So I turn it off. Camera shake. I have it on default, which is its highest mode. However, if this was a competitive multiplayer game, I would turn it off as that can distract you. Same thing with underwater camera shake. Give me that full cinematic experience. Leave it on. And then coming over here to accessibility tab. If you look around, you will notice that all of these are previous options that we've seen in these other four tabs. So we're done. There is a tab on my YouTube channel as well as the description in every video to my merch store in case you're sick of being naked. I also have coupon and discount codes for many products including custom controllers and gaming chairs found only in the description of my videos. Check me out at Facebook Gaming where I am a partner and upload a ton of exclusive gameplay content. Join the community discord to chat with myself for the stallions and stallionettes of gamer heaven. And while I love each and every one of you bucking broncos equally, if you want to become a stallion or stallionette by supporting myself as well as the channel, clicking on the membership tab allows you to become a member of gamer heaven where you unlock a ton of exclusive perks. Smacking the thumbs up button, otherwise known as liking the video, will help it to get seen by more gamers. This information will reach in the system as well. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing, and honest gaming peripheral reviews, keyboards, mice, headsets, controllers, mics, chairs, etc. And I'll see you tomorrow because I upload daily, usually, most of the time. Peace.